Hello, Silas here. Today I'll be showing you how to create a fire and smoke explosion and turn it into Lego bricks. You may have seen this effect in the Lego movie, the Lego Batman movie, or the Lego Ninjago movie. It's a really cool effect, and thanks to geometry nodes, it can now be done in Blender. Now there are other YouTube videos out there on the subject of converting fluid and smoke simulations into Lego bricks, but they use a very traditional process of modifiers and instancing which I think is unnecessary with the new geometry nodes implementation. So a YouTuber by the name of Joey Carlino has created a Lego geometry nodes YouTube video and I just want to say this is following a completely different technique. His technique involves using the new geometry nodes in Blender 3.4 I believe. I've tested these nodes and they actually crash my Blender projects. It may be different in the future, but as for now, I'll be using Blender 3.2 uh, for this tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll be using Blender 3.2, but you can use any version of the 3.0 series. Step 1. Fire plus smoke simulation. So the first step in the process of creating a LEGO explosion would be to create or use a simulated explosion. Now you could, if you wanted to, download a free OpenVDB file sequence and use that instead. I'll have a link for one down below. Or you can stick around here and I'll show you how to create your own entirely in Blender. So, you need a bounding box domain and an inflow object. For the inflow object, we'll use an icosphere, cut it in half. Use the top half on a minimal decimate modifier. For the bounding box, we'll make it simple by adding in a cube and scaling it up. Then we can add the physics settings on the right hand column, making sure to set both the cube and the icosphere to the correct settings. This includes giving an initial force number on the normals of the icosphere, giving an explosive force at the beginning and tapering off at the end. We're also going to increase the heat and buoyancy for the first few frames, correlating it to the first keyframes we added to the icosphere. Vorsity is useful, as it allows the smoke to behave more like real smoke in the air rather than just some liquid in some kind of solution. Also make sure to set the VDB output to a fixed folder that you have created or else it will get written over. Step 2. Start a fresh setup. So to start, there is a bit of setup that goes on before we jump into the Geometry Nodes tab. After you've imported the VDB sequence and aligned it into place, we can then proceed to add an object and press F2 to rename it to a GeoNodes placeholder. We can also rename the VDB smoke sequence as well, as we will be duplicating it into two. In order to turn the simulation into mesh, We'll use the volume to mesh modifier, but this requires a holding mesh for it to work. So we will create two of these meshes for the fire and smoke and pair them up to each smoke simulation. In the modifier properties, there is an attribute slot where we can type in which simulation attribute to use. For the smoke, we will use density, and for the fire, we will use flames. Step 3 geometry nodes. Finally, 
it is time to go into the forbidden grounds of geometry nodes. But all jokes aside, it's actually pretty easy to understand. And, as long as you keep the vector mass on the lighter side, then it should all go pretty smoothly. So we're going to add in an object info node first, and attach a flame object to it. And then we're going to duplicate it for the other object, the smoke object or the fire object. So now we're going to add a mesh line node and a grid primitive. We're going to connect them up with an instance on points node, join the mesh line node and then the grid to instance. Let's just join this up to see what's going on. Now I want to fix how it looks. So first, uh, densing it up on its x and y values is a great start, and then we can scale it up like so. Sometimes you have to dial it in to get the look you want. Changing the offset is also something to dial in. Dial in the scale once again to engulf the whole explosion. Bring up the count. Dividing the size of the x and y values by the vertices gives a perfect offset between grids. Now we can convert the mesh to points with the mesh to points node. Good name. To subtract the points, we need to realize the instances. This turns the points into tangible geometry instead of instances of itself. Now we can delete the outside points with the delete geometry node. We're going to use the raycast node. It's great for selecting certain kinds of points. It basically spits out rays, hits, di hits different vertices, edges, faces, and gives you information from that. So connect up the flame or smoked object. Adding in the vector node makes the workflow much easier. We're going to use it to control the ray direction. I'm setting the Z to one. Now we're going to add in the vector math. Change it to dot product. Dot product is a great way to compare vectors. We're going to compare the vector and the hit normal. This is going to spit back many different float values as a result. We're going to filter them with a compare node. Set the compare node to less than or equal to and plug in the dot product. Now we can connect up the compare node to the delete geometry node. This filters out all vector angles that are less than or equal to zero. As you can see, we get a very good result of points only in the mesh. Now we're going to duplicate the setup and change it to the flame object. Let's connect up the new delete geometry node. Setting up the compare node to not equal creates an invert mask. So let's subtract the flame from the smoke points. Duplicate this node and set it to not equal. We should also duplicate this delete geometry node and join it up with this node branch. Let's join this node to the delete geometry node we just set up and join it all up with a join geometry node. As you can see, the flame is subtracted, so we get no overlap, which is a very good thing. Let's now instance the Lego bricks on these points. So we're gonna do this for both the flames and the smoke. Let's import a Lego brick. We can add in another object, info node, and select our brick. Let's quickly change the materials for the two bricks. The smoke can be simple diffuse gray, and the flames can be orange and emissive. When we have plugged in the bricks, we can dial in the scale, making sure there is no overlap. Seeing as bricks aren't square, we can adjust the grid to give more vertical space to the bricks. This is something you can do by eye easily. Or, if you really want to be tech savvy about it, you can look up the ratio difference between the vertical length and the width of a Lego brick, but I'm not, I'm not going to do that here. Now let's copy the scale values over to the other brick. We can use the eyedropper tool to select objects, and as you can see, we have our fire explosion. Let's add some emission to the fire with an emission node. Ambient occlusion is also helpful to see the bricks. And there you go, all done. So guys. If you like this video, be sure to give it a like. And um, it wasn't enough time for me to explain, truly explain the um, how you put the uh, Lego studs and stuff on top of the bricks, but it's actually quite simple. You, ju you just use the technique of the raycast node, and instead of using the hit normal, you just use the hit distance, and you filter up the float values from that. It's actually quite simple to do. Uh, as you can see, it's quite simple. Um, yeah, and then just add that to the node tree. Uh, you know, use a mesh to points node set to faces. Instance your studs on there. Not too hard. Um, but if you guys really like these LEGO creations, uh, consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll have a link to all my Blender creations on the site. Uh, you can download um, this LEGO 
project and also you can download the Lego studs and even Lego slopes that I made in completely in geometry nodes. So, um, oh yeah, also print, putting my procedural clay shader on there too. Anyways guys, thanks so much for uh, coming down to the channel and watching this video really does mean a lot. And if you like this video, give it a like. And if you want to see more of this content, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any upcoming content that I might post. And if you have any thoughts or feelings you want to put down below, be sure to leave a comment. I'll look through all of them and try to reply to every single one. Alright guys, stay awesome. See you in the next video. Seals Productions out.